to start, how do you define a, a philosophy of life? Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I co-authored, uh, co-edited, sorry, a, a book uh, a couple of years ago, a uh, year and a half ago, called um, How to Live a Good Life. And the book is basically a collection of 15 different essays by uh, people who not only study but practice a particular philosophy of life or a religion, because I think of religions, in fact, as philosophies of life. So in the introduction to that book, uh, we put forth the notion that give or take a philosophy of life has three components, a metaphysics, an ethics, and a set of practices. So consider, for instance, the religion that I grew up with, uh, you know, Catholicism or Christianity more, more generally. Uh, there is a metaphysics there, right? So the notion that the world was created by a creator God who is all loving and all powerful and all that sort of stuff. Uh, then there is an ethics, which uh, consists in things like the Ten Commandments from the Old Testament, the teachings of Jesus from the New Testament, and so on and so forth. And then there is practices. Uh, you're supposed to read scriptures and reflect on, on scriptures. You're supposed to go to church and share with other people, listen to sermons, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, and then, of course, engage in behaviors that are actually Christians. Now, whether people do that or not, it's a different issue. But, but that's the idea. Similarly, for a philosophy of life that is not religious in nature, such as Stoicism, uh, Stoicism has a metaphysics. The Stoics are... Uh, the ancient Stoics were essentially what we would consider uh, pantheistic. That, that is, they believed that the universe is the same thing as God, or vice versa. So God is in, is in in the universe. He is He is the universe. In modern terms, we would say uh, that they essentially thought that nature was uh, made of matter. Uh, they were you know, materialists in, from that pers- perspective, and that the universe is governed by laws of cause and effect. So that's the metaphysics. The ethics consisted in things like the notion of the four virtues, uh, the four cardinal virtues of you know, practical wisdom, justice, temperance, and courage that you're supposed to follow in life uh, as, you know, as you try to live your life. Or, uh, for instance, uh, uh, the notion of the dichotomy of control that maybe we'll talk about a little later, uh, which uh, comes out very forcefully in one of the prominent Stoic authors, Epictetus. And then there is a set of practices, things like dif- different kinds of meditations, uh, a meditation about adversity, a meditation about death, things about like journaling, uh, you know, taking time to, to sort of self-analyze how you're doing and how you could possibly improve, things like that. So from that perspective, just, just from this brief comparison, you can see that there is a structure to philosophies of life and that that structure isn't really that different from the structure of religions, the main difference usually is, of course, that as a Stoic practitioner, I can criticize, let's say, Epictetus or Seneca or any of the other Stoic authors, and I'm not going to incur into, uh, you know, any kind of wrath uh, by 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 any god. Any god. Uh, while on the other hand, if you want to criticize, you know, Jesus, then then you're in troubled waters because he's a god. I love this book that you mentioned. How to Live a Good Life. Have it, have it right here. So 15 different philosophies in there. Uh, would you advise someone against maybe creating one of their own? What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I, I would advise against creating one on your own. But I want to be clear about why I say this. So often people ask me, you know, why can I not come up with my own ideas about you know, life, the universe, and everything? Or why can I not pick and choose uh, different combinations from different philosophies, basically coming up with uh, what is referred to often as an eclectic philosophy. Mm. And yes, the answer is, sure you can. But it's not easy. <laughs> uh, it's not easy to do it well. And, and since there are actually out there already a large number of philosophies that are internally coherent, well thought out, useful, etc., etc., why the hell would you want to reinvent the wheel, basically, right? Now, it's, it's, it's like saying somebody's like, you know, uh, sure, I, you could go to the doctor... And, and take advantage of the expertise of you know uh, uh, groups of people that have studied medicine, or you can come up with your own remedies. And it's possible your own remedies are going to f- work, but it's going to be you know treacherous and and more likely than not, it's going to kill you. So now that said, all philosophies and religions that I can think of do start out as eclectic. 